So this guy named David Cameron used to be Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Back in May of 2015, he thought that he could derail the UK Independence Party's growing influence in parliamentary politics by promising a referendum on UK membership in the European Union before 2017. He timed the referendum carefully, confident that his support for remaining in the EU would be confirmed by Her Majesty's subjects. He announced the vote in February 2016 and the referendum went to the polls on the 23rd of June. Between those two dates, he spent a lot of time debating the merits of remaining in the European Union. On the 24th of June, Cameron announced his resignation as Prime Minister and as leader of the Conservative Party. After a quick election, Theresa May was chosen to succeed him. Also a pro-Remain Tory, the new PM was duty-bound to see Brexit through. All that she had to do was make Brexit work, and she sounded like she might just after the election. We should have known better, huh? When our society discusses issues politely, with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. I normally don't talk about foreign politics, mostly because I don't feel that I know them as well as the people who live there. But how Her Majesty's government is handling Brexit is just too stupid to pass by forever. Besides, at least it isn't a discussion of how ineptly Jodie Whittaker is portraying the doctor. The people of the United Kingdom voted to leave the EU. The margin of victory for Brexit may have been narrow, but Brexit won and calls for a second referendum have been denied consistently by the Tories. May, for all her support for Remain, made speeches that left little doubt that she had heard the will of the people loud and clear. I honestly thought that she would negotiate a good exit deal with the EU. But was I right? Um, no. Just, no. The longer May remains as Prime Minister, the more convinced that I become that she couldn't negotiate a refund for a pullover sweater made without a neck opening to put her head through. She has demonstrated the firm consistency of a melted ice cream in her politics, and she has given Jeremy Corbyn, a man so vacuous that he called Karl Marx a great economist, everything that he needed to gain seats during the snap election to create a hung parliament. may claim to be negotiating hard with the EU. Instead, the Chequers proposal demonstrated that she had managed only to find a way to remain in the EU without remaining in the EU. That certainly takes some talent, but it isn't what the people voted for, Theresa. Does the proposed settlement agreed upon this month withdraw the UK from the EU? Nope. The UK will still participate in the common market as if a member, honoring the rules of the EU on its trade goods. The EU chooses the rules on professional competencies. Free movement will continue. There will be common foreign affairs and security policies between the two. So what freedom did the UK gain in this proposal? As far as I can tell, only freedom from the right to vote in the European Parliament on policy measures which will govern the UK. Freedom to become a non-voting vassal state to the EU, really. And Theresa's government is proposing to pay at least £200 billion for that freedom. What the 
ever loving hell, Teresa. You haven't negotiated a deal. You've negotiated debt peonage for Great Britain. Don't act like you didn't have a strong hand going into negotiations either, Mrs. May. Honestly, I looked at the trade numbers. While the United Kingdom enjoys a trade surplus in services, the trade deficit that they are experiencing primarily stems from a trade imbalance with Germany and absorbs all of the trade surplus in services and then some. You had the high ground. The UK supplies a significant amount of the annual funding of the EU. The EU needs the UK to continue handing over billions of pounds each year more than the UK needs the EU picking its pocket. The UK used to have full sovereignty over its territorial waters and its borders before joining the EU. Under the agreement proposed, it will not regain that sovereignty. How exactly was the EU going to deny one of the most powerfully armed island nations in the world the right to control its own waters and resources, or force the UK to keep its borders open? How were they going to force the UK to allow EU citizens to stay if they chose not to become British subjects in March of 2019? The trade balance within the EU favors the EU, especially Germany, the Netherlands, and Belgium. The UK has a huge trade deficit in goods within the EU, which only their export of goods and services outside of the EU ameliorates. And even then, not completely. Germany functions as a giant leech when it comes to the UK gross domestic product, and only foreign investments keep the United Kingdom's economy growing. Under the proposal, the UK will have to negotiate new trade deals with one eye on what the Executive Council's guidance is, because if they violate EU trade practices, then they lose their EU trade deals. Again, what the hell? Germany in particular depends on UK export markets. Any attempt to embargo or impose punitive tariffs upon the United Kingdom would be like China embargoing OPEC, stupid and crippling for their economy. Germany needs the United Kingdom much more than the United Kingdom needs Germany, so not even punitive tariffs are really pragmatic if the United Kingdom reciprocates. Meanwhile, the United States remains the biggest trade partner of the United Kingdom outside of the EU, yet May is risking her ability to make trade deals which Brexit is supposed to allow. Whether you like him or not, Donald Trump is a tough negotiator. He will not make a deal that will hurt American interests, even if it risks angering a long-standing ally of the United States. Oh, and he cannot stand the EU's protectivism, which Brussels argues is necessary to prevent the US from unfairly flooding the European markets. May stated that Trump was wrong about a bad Brexit deal risking trade negotiations with the US. Mrs. May. Are you telling me that you are going to make Donald J. Trump back down? Him? You mean the guy who imposed tariffs on hundreds of billions of dollars in Chinese trade goods because the People's Republic wanted to keep the trade agreements which allow them to rip off intellectual property in place? The guy who, if they can't negotiate a settlement, is prepared to increase those tariffs to 25% of the value of goods and levy tariffs on a further $267 billion of more trade goods, effectively putting 25% tariffs on everything coming out of China? The guy who risked his re-election in 2020 by triggering a Chinese embargo on soybeans when his base is blue-collar workers and farmers. That guy? You're going to tell him that the U.S. will make a new deal with the United Kingdom. Just how stupid are you? You're starting to make Jeremy Corbyn look pretty damn smart, and I'm positive that man grew up in a house full of peeling lead-based paint under some high-power transmission lines. Here's the smart call. A no-deal Brexit. Yeah, it's gonna suck. 
But if the UK says that the proposed Brexit is not acceptable, then that's what you will likely have. I'd bet that given the EU still needs the UK much, much more than the UK needs the EU, the negotiators will hurry back to the table as quickly and quietly as possible to negotiate a real deal and not this travesty. To my British friends, I strongly suggest that you contact your MP and tell them to reject this abortion of a deal. Tell them that this deal is remain in disguise and that's not what the UK voted to do. Yeah, that would probably topple Theresa and put Jeremy effing Corbyn in as Prime Minister. No, that's not what I want for you guys. I've been watching Prime Minister's questions for a couple of years straight now, and the number of times that Teresa has outfoxed Jeremy is astonishingly high. But I have to point out to you that you survived Gordon Brown and you survived Tony Blair. You might just survive Jeremy Corbyn for the month or two that it takes for him to be forced to resign because he cannot get his own government to agree upon who sits in which chair, much less actual policies. Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours. If you like this video, check out my playlists. Check out these channels I have subscribed for more great content. New episodes are coming, so subscribe and ring the bell.